Halo alkanes also go by the name alkyl halides. You'll find questions on this organic family at the end of section 1.1 in the textbook. We're going to be using general forms of the different organic families when we get to the reactions. And so I'll just introduce the notation Rx to represent a halo alkene. As you can see on the, in the note here, the R section indicates a hydrocarbon and the X is the halogen that has replaced one of the hydrogens on that hydrocarbon. So for example, we have CH3, CH, CH3. You'll notice the middle carbon has a chlorine attached to it. So what I've outlined in green is the R, the hydrocarbon component, and the X is the halogen. To name haloalkanes, we follow the same rules as for naming alkanes. Just be aware that whenever you see a halogen, it's always named as a side group, which means it will always be listed as a prefix in the name. There are four halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and each of those, the ending is adjusted with the O, and so a side group of fluorine is, is named fluoro. Watch your spelling. Chlorine becomes chloro, Br is bromo, and I is iodo, not to be confused with frodo. Okay, don't know if we have any Lord of the Rings fans there. Moving on, let's look at these uh, next two examples. Okay, so I'm going to suggest that you copy down these two examples, follow the rules for naming alkanes, looking for the longest continuous carbon chain, and numbering so that the side groups have the lowest possible number. Then go ahead and construct the name. When you're done, check your, your answers with the video. Okay, so in the first example, we see that numbering right to left was the preferred direction in order to have the chlorine off of carbon 2 as opposed to carbon 3 if we had numbered from the left. And so there are four carbons in the parent chain. Monkeys eat peeled bananas. There's our butte, A-N-E for the single bonds between the carbons. And then we have a chlorine substituent off of carbon two. Looking at the second example, I'm not sure whether you thought that carbon six might be a methyl group. You'll never go, you're never going to have a methyl group at the beginning or end of a straight chain hydrocarbon. It's always going to be the first or last carbon, so included in your continuous chain. So in fact, there's six here, six carbons, hence the hex, well, all with single bonds. There's the A and E. And so we have the chloro group coming off of two and the bromo off of four. I'm not worried about the bromo being the lower alpha, having the lower number, because when I number from left to right, the side groups are on carbons two and four. If I had numbered from right to left, then they would have been on three and five. Well, two and four is definitely the preferred numbering, so that's what I do no matter what. And now when I sequence the prefixes, I just have to make sure that the bromo comes before the chloro. Okay, the next example I'm asking you to draw 11133 pentafluoropentane. This is actually used as a blowing agent for spray insulation. So go ahead and draw that and then check your answer on the video. Okay, so we see the pentane, which tells us five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. And the fact that it's A and E means that there is a single bond between all of these carbon atoms. Okay, so it helps at this point to number the carbon, so I'm going to number them, one, two, three, four, five, and then I won't make a mistake on where I put the five fluorines. So just to be clear, this penta means that there are five fluorine side groups, and where are they? Off of carbon one, three times, and then two off of carbon three. So off of carbon one here, we have F, F and F, and then off of carbon three, we have two more Fs. So the remainder of the diagram gets filled in with hydrogens, satisfying the octet rule for every carbon that's left.
Now, if you're interested in drawing this in the line diagram, and I recommend that you keep working at those to uh, improve your skills there, just set up your pen team to begin with. So one, two, three, four. If you're counting the carbons at each end, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then off of carbon three, we're going to have the two fluorines. So one can come up and one can angle here. And then off of carbon one, we're going to have three fluorines. So one here, one here, and one here. So that's also acceptable as um, a drawing when you sketch 11133 pentafluoropentane. Uh, CFCs, you may have heard of before, it stands for chlorofluorocarbon. So you can see where the CFC comes in. If you think about it, having chlorine and fluorine in a hydrocarbon makes this these compounds haloalkanes. They're common refrigerants, um, but the problem is when they're used uh, on Earth and they as gases, they rise into the atmosphere, ultraviolet light breaks the carbon-chlorine bond in these molecules, which means that a chlorine atom with its seven valence electrons becomes available to react with other molecules. We call that a free chlorine atom. That chlorine atom is very reactive and it will react with O3 molecules. If you remember from your nomenclature, O3 is ozone. So in fact, the use of these CFCs combined with the ultraviolet radiation in the atmosphere destroys the ozone layer. So Montreal Protocol was an international agreement that was established to reduce and eliminate the use of CFCs and a number of nations signed on to this protocol. And and it's encouraging to actually see that a reduction in the use of CFCs by various countries has actually led to uh, some regeneration of the ozone layer. So that's encouraging. Okay, the last part of this lesson here is just a review then of our general procedure for naming organic compounds. So by the time we finished everything, you know, this is your general procedure to follow. So when you first determine the principal functional group, you're looking for the highest priority functional group. So now that I've introduced the halogens in the haloalkanes, I'll just make the point here that alkyl groups and halogens have the same priority. So the suffix is still going to be A and E. They're still going to be named as alkanes. And then we continue through the rest of the rules as we did for alkanes. And that's it.